And if you've got any questions as we go, just drop them in the chat or unmute if you prefer. Either is fine. I'm happy to answer questions on the fly. Yeah, Alex, thank you so much for being here. Um, if you need an introduction for Alex, he he started Title Cycles. He started this whole project. Um, he is he's been so instrumental to the the live coding movement. It's become a culture of its own, and he's he's been dedicated for the last uh, fifteen plus years. And he helped coin the phrase algorithm. So he's he's been a massive influencer, and it's it's my great honor to introduce Alex McQueen. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, it's a great honor to be here. Um, I'm just going to spend one more second uh, wiring up my microphone. I think you might just be getting me in one ear. I'm not sure, but either way, do that. And yeah, this is the sound of me configuring Jack. <laughs> Okay, so I shall now, am I able to share my screen? Oh no, could you just uh, switch on screen sharing please, Tyler? Um, yeah, so um, I normally kind of talk about using Tidal in, I try and be as accessible as possible. Um, but um, for this one, I even though it's the first Tidal meetup, I thought, um, I've been feeling a bit lonely lately working on Tidal and really wanted to share more about how it works. Um, sort of get a bit deeper into the innards Tidal. Um, and, um, and, and also there's this new feature, which I think it does help being able to imagine what's going under on under the under the hood um what what the units are doing are you able to show your screen now yeah sure okay um so i've made some slides i'll go through those take about 15 minutes and then i'll do a demo which will be more hands-on and accessible but um yeah i don't know if it's early or late there um but uh yeah, hold on to your hats. <laughs> I mean, it's not that bad. Uh, it's just talking about more the kind of philosophy of time and things, which gets a bit involved. Um, so what is a, so the presentation is about why Tidal can't count, but then at the end, I'll show how I've worked out how Tidal can count and the new features which um, I've implemented um, and I'm really excited about that I released two days ago. Um, so what is a tidal pattern? So um, pattern patterns are the time of numbers. So patterns are just numbers and other things like um, sample names and things, but um, they're numbers changing over time um, and that's really all it is so all a tidal pattern can do is answer one question um, what values are active during a particular time frame so you have this um, tidal pattern which is actually a function it has an input and an output um, and uh, the input is time and the output is values and that's all it can do. Um, pretty simple really. There it is. <laughs> and then the values get sent to the sound system. So the values can be anything. You can have a pattern of anything at all. Um, so when you use something like n or um, pan, 
Um, what you're giving Pan is a pattern of values. Um, and what Pan is turning it into is a pattern of synthesizer messages, which then get combined with other ones to, um, you need at least that sound or S pattern to be able to make a sound, but um, you're combining patterns together. Um, but you always end up with the pattern of values, um, whether that the values are synthesizer messages, strings, numbers. So there's no data structures really, you just have this function. Um, there's no list of events um, until you actually give the pattern um, the time as input, then you get the events out as a list. But um, otherwise there's no data structure. Like if you're reversing something, you're not reversing a data structure, you're just cha um, changing the calculation so that it is reversed. Um, in fact, you're not calculating anything until um, later. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> Um, you're defining a behavior instead of doing calculations. There's no side effects, so the pattern can't change any values outside of it. It can't um, make lights flash. All it can do is create values and then something else actually takes those values and does something with it, like makes these speaker cones wobble. Um, only time is input and values is output, as I keep saying. Um, so there we go. How So this seems really impractical. I mean, I've said that you can reverse time, but I've also said that you can't change anything inside the pattern. The pattern can't change anything outside of it. Um, so how is that possible? Because if the pattern only has time as input and values as output and can't do anything else, then it seems like that's pretty limited, right? Um, and, and you've had experience with patterns and found that you can do all kinds of things with it. Um, and the secret is that you can manipulate time on the way to the pattern and values on the way out of it to make a new pattern. So when you have a pattern like BDSN, like a kit snare pattern, um, uh, you, in order to reverse that, so it's SNBD, um, you wouldn't uh, you can't actually go and change and move those values around. In fact, um, you can't change that pattern at all. Um, but what you can do is make a new pattern that uses the old one. So this would be the new pattern. Um, it gets time as input, but then it manipulates time in order to get a different part of the cycle because you've reversed time now. Um, and then it uses that to um, give to the old pattern, um, gets the old values out of the old pattern, and then um, finally uh, it manipulates the values on the way out as well um, uh, in order to get the reversed ones. Um, and actually this isn't what it does when you apply rev. Um, it just, uh, because it doesn't calculate anything in order to reverse it, it just makes a new function that uses the old function the functions are not actually run until later when it's um, uh, calculated. Um, so, looks like Alex froze. Yeah, I thought it was my connection, but <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't just me. <laughs> you froze for a, a second. <clears throat> you, you, you yeah, even the mouse. The last thing you said was how Rev actually does the lazy evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. There was a question about lazy evaluation. Oh, no, 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 you, your audio cut out, you froze for a little bit. And the last thing we heard you say was uh, about how Rev doesn't actually work like this, but it like waits to, to do the calculation until like all the 
all the dust settles. Okay. Um, I'm just going to turn off my Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm plugged into the Ethernet, and maybe I froze because um, it was on the Wi-Fi. I hope I don't go completely if, when I do this. <laughs> um, right, I've done that. Am I still here? Can you hear me? Yep. Oh, good. Okay. So hopefully I won't freeze again. So how long did I freeze for? I was talking about... Rev. Just like 20 seconds. Oh, tops. Okay. 20 seconds tops. Okay. Um, and um, so, yeah, I can't really remember exactly what I was saying, but, um, but basically uh, that's how it works. Um, a pattern, when you apply rev to a pattern, it doesn't actually calculate any values and reverse them. Um, it just makes a new function around the old one that has a different behavior. So if, if there's any questions, please ask. I really especially like stupid questions um, because if you ask an intelligent question, that usually means that you know the answer already and that's less interesting. Stupid questions are much better, I think. Um, so that's how it works. Uh, so why can't it count? Um, that's not completely clear. So let's have a look at that. Um, so taking the BDSN, um, um, values are only calculated as a re result of time and not each other. So time goes into the pattern, values come out, but um, the values can't really have a relationship to each other. This is actually similar to how a lot of sound synthesis works. Um, that's the idea of a signal um, just working off time. So, um, for example, um, I don't actually know much about synthesis, but um, to make a sine wave, it's just a function of time. Um, you just multiply um, uh, a number, which is the time value, um, uh, by a sine operator, and to do additive um, uh, synthesis, you might get a square wave and a sine wave, um, calculate the value for um, both based on time and then multiply them together, um, that kind of thing. That's exactly what patterns are doing, except with patterns, because it's based on um, discrete values instead of continuous um, sound. The time that's coming in is actually a time span. So it has a beginning and end. It's not just asking for a point in time. It's asking for, um, in, in the case of Tidal, it's asking for 1 20th of a second's worth of events at time. Um, and then the pattern returns which values are active during that time. So it doesn't miss any um, anything. Uh, but anyway, that's a bit of a segue. Um, uh, but yeah, so these values come out just based off hanging off time and they can't re have a relationship with each other apart from what is kind of implied by the behavior that you're coding into the pattern. Um, to count is to add one to what came before. That's kind of the definition of counting. It's sort of an accu accumulation. Um, five plus one is six and so on uh, and you can't work out six without knowing what five is so um, yeah Tidal can't do it values can't know what came before in Tidal um, because time can be manipulated freely the past is unknowable um, so this is maybe a sort of intuitive way of thinking about it. Um, if um, you can reverse time, then causality is reversed as well. Um, it means that suddenly um, the events which um, were 
looking into the future, now looking into the past, or um, but because this is so based on time, it means that you can really manipulate time very freely. That's 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 the kind of advantage of this um, representation is that time is really flexible. You can shift it, you can chop it up, you can rearrange it. Um, but because you can do that, you lose the ability to have one event being caused by another. So you can't have Markov chains or L systems or other things which depend on what came before. Um, in SU, you just make a big list and pass it into Tidal, but that's kind of cheating. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, you can't... It's... it's um, uh, can't uh, you th yeah, you can't get title to count. Um, what I'm going to do now is ask you to start shift to a web browser. Um, I just need to start streaming. So um, it's, it's a bit difficult getting sound to work through. Um, uh, uh, sounds get to work it not work well through Zoom, so I'm just going to stream to YouTube. It's pretty low latency, so this should work fine. Um, just make sure it's working. Um, yeah, excellent collection. Ah, yeah, there is there is a Markov chain um, function, um, as um, Ted Koro San says. Um, oh no, Korpazi says. Um, but with this new stuff, um, we're going to be able to make that work much better. Uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Um, yeah, there's a function for making Markov chains, and then it makes a big list. You pass it in, and then it'll loop after a while. But we'll be able to make it work uh, properly uh, now. Right, so if you go to um, youtube.com... Uh, oh, I think... Hang on, I might have to stop and start the stream. Sorry about this. Um, Uh, but if you go to slash yaksu slash live, um, it's just doing this. Um, and let me know if you see it live. You might have to. Let's not go live. The button's there. Come on, YouTube. It says excellent connection. Stream is healthy. Doesn't seem to be live. Um, is that working for anyone? No. Okay. Annoying. Um, okay, uh, one minute. I'm going to schedule a new stream. That might um, that might work better. Yeah, and H, I did set it up to go automatically. I thought. Um, Um, if I create a new event, it should. Right, let's try this. Hmm. Um, oh, um, is it working then? I think. Or?
It looks like the stream has uh, been started. Yeah. Yeah, it's just taking a while to get going. Um, yeah, so if you've got questions or comments, if you could still drop them in there we the, in the um, Zoom chat rather than the YouTube chat, then we'll have to keep everything together. Um, so I'm just going to explain how... Let's slow it down a bit. So what I mean by title can't count is if you have something like this, um, I've got five events um, spread over eight steps, um, and I want to have that go A, B, C, D, E. Um, so if um, if I wanted to do that, I'm, this is the kind of thing that you try when you first learn Tidal. Um, you try and do this. And it's missed out C and E because the numbers here aren't lining up with the events here. Um, it, it's confusing for a while. You kind of work out what's going on and then you move on. Um, but actually, it would be really nice if um, it was easy to do this because it's something which um, you would want to do all the time. Um, <laughs> but it's not easy at all. There are ways of doing it with a function called fix and things, but it's, it's sort of uh, annoying. Um, so, um, uh, yeah, Yaksu, I came up uh, with that by um, trying to think up um, which uh, was my favourite letter of the alphabet to start a word with, um, and just went through all 26 of them in the um, Roman alphabet and sort of thought I liked the feel of Y best. And then next I went through all the letters seeing which ones I preferred after that, um, after Y and came up with A and carried on until I got to U and then couldn't think, find another letter to come after it. So it was kind of an algorithmic generation based on which um, letters I like. Uh, um, so, yeah, so back to the presentation in Zoom then. Um, Uh, so that's the problem. Time can't count. Uh, title can't count. Um, it would be nice if it could, if it could sort of sp uh, do those, uh, I think they're called isorhythms, where you have, um, you can count events and then do things based on that. Um, where is my presentation? I've lost it. I think I need to click present again. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, so, yeah, that's where we were. So the question is, um, so that's the bad news. What's the good news is that I've solved this now and um, and released it a couple of days ago. Um, and I lied about only time going into patterns. Actually, you can also put in control of values as some of you might have done. Um, so, this generates numbers which gets sent into the pattern. Um, so this is a clue about how we can solve this. Because um, really there's something called state in between the controller and the pattern. So when you move this, then it feeds numbers into a dictionary or a um, associative array or whatever you want to call it. Um, but it, this sort of represents the state of the world. So what gets fed into the pattern is really time as well as the state of the world as far as title is concerned um, and so maybe it's possible to get the values to interact with the state um, once they're outside of the pattern even though you they can't relate to each other inside the pattern maybe they could outside and this is what i've um, done um, so we can still only pattern values, but function uh, values can be functions of state, just as patterns are functions of time. Values are now functions of state. Um, they have state as input and state as output. And so it goes through each event in time, over time, 
So BD gets some state, it can output it and pass it on to SN and, and they can change what their values are based on that. Um, and that's working in title version 1.7.2. Um, ah, no audio in the stream. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, click on live, jump to the current position in the stream. Right, I'm going to go back to that now. Um, I guess, um, Abane, uh, you, it was working yesterday for you. So, yeah, something strange. Okay. So this is how we can solve it. Um, so, um, if we start with, um, uh, I've got quite a high CPS. Let's drop that down. Okay. Um, so there we go. Um, so what we can do is um, we can um, use n take, which will take a value from a list. Um, we have to give it a name because um, the values um, exist in state and state is a dictionary. It's a dictionary from names to values. Um, and so we have to give a name to the value that we're um, uh, counting. And so I've just called it Susan randomly. It can be anything. Um, let's, uh, uh, and then if I run that, oh, so that should be working now, um, which is good. If I changed it to, um, have four values, um, then it wouldn't match with the number that it takes per cycle, but that doesn't matter. Um, so that's, that's working nicely. You might notice that, um, uh, if I pause it and start it again, it'll carry on from where it left off because it's all based on state, not time. The at least the um, the taking things from the Susan um, uh, state. Um, oh, congratulations, uh, Shipin! I have to listen to that. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you can change it on the fly. So. But you can hear that it has to sort of drain, have to go, it has to go through all of these values before it picks up the new um, one. Um, it can also cope with infinite lists, but the list, list would never be empty. So once you give it an infinite list, it, it, can, it can't change it. There, there should be a way of resetting it. Um, uh, I haven't worked that out yet though. <laughs> so I won't, I won't run that one because it'll just, uh, well, I may as well. Um, this is just showing how if I start it again, it'll carry on with E um, because it's working with state. So now let's switch to Harold because Susan has that infinite list to worry about. Um, so you can also count without a list. So this is just counting from zero up forever. And again, um, and the good thing is that, uh, this is all using the same state as comes in from the controller. So I can actually manipulate the state while it's running. So each time I reset, set that to zero, it'll start counting from zero. Yeah, yeah, you don't need dollar fair. Um, yeah, dollar is, um, 
you can have it there, but you don't need it. Um, it's just one of those things, the dollar, isn't it? <laughs> you just have to work out where it goes. Um, uh, yeah, if there's only one thing, um, then you don't need to put it in parentheses, so you don't need the dollar. Um, so, oh yeah, so you could also have another pattern use this. So now this is using that counter that this is counting up, um, but it's only reading from it, it's not writing to it. So whenever this counts up, this changes. I'll share this file um, on the forum later. Um, and there's also count to, so that's sort of, um, now this will count from naught to three um, because there's four numbers there um, and yeah. Um, I really like that actually. Um, so this is the an Euclidean pattern that's the African standard pattern. And if I just have four values, then it'll just rotate around on that structure. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm glad I'm not listening to that guy doing the alphabet anymore. I think that's fine. Uh, and you can pattern that as well. Um, it starts getting weird though, because you're patterning a number that's used when resetting state, but that's happening outside of time. So it might not do what you expect all the time. Um, so the first arg in n count is just like a symbol, like in super collider. Um, I think so. I'm not too, I don't completely understand super collider. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just used as, um, a word to identify a bit of state. So it doesn't mean anything apart from it's just naming, um, that state. And it means that you can refer to that state in other parts of the pattern, which is handy. Um, so one um, unexpected thing to start with is that you can't reverse the state. So that's going up. And if I reverse it, I'm reversing the structure, but I'm not reversing the notes. Um, so there we go. Um, so this is all really fun. Um, and I've only just implemented it. So I'm still discovering new things about it and I think will for some time. Um, uh, and that's good. Um, you, uh, let me think what's in, I've taken a bit more time today because we've got more time. I hope that's okay. Um, what have I got wrong there? Oh yeah, I then count two. So you can do this n count will work and uh, count will work for any um, numerical number and adding putting take on something will work for any parameter so I can do squiz count two four for example
another unexpected thing is if I do a classic Jux Rev, all the counters will then go twice as fast because you're doubling up all the events and they're all taking values from the number line. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for bearing with me as I woke up and plugged everything in. Um, if there's any more questions, then feel free to put them in the chat or unmute. Um, I think I'll stop sharing my screen so you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's nice to have a relaxed session for privacy. Um, yeah, and, or actually, I mean, because it is a more relaxed session with fewer people, if you've got questions about anything else, then feel free as well. <laughs> if there's anything that's been bugging you in Tidal. What does the squeeze function do? I've never used that um, before. Yeah, it's a nice distortion. It's fairly new. Um, I think uh, Callum Gunn put it in, but um, it's just uh, really dirty distortion. I think it tries to do something like um, changing the pitch, but does it in a really dirty way. So. Uh, Sounds great, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I saw the problem with the noise in one of your channels. Um, yeah, I've not experienced that before. So it, if it's only happened with Super Collider, then it probably is a Super Collider problem, but it's a weird one, just in one headphone as well. Um, yeah, I can't think how that would be super dirt specific either. Um, okay, cool. So, yeah, if there aren't any more questions, should we have more of a go into the next bit? Um, uh, Tyler. Oh, wow. I just feel like you're, I mean, I have so many questions. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, like now title cycles has a, a memory of what's happened. It's like a little, just like, it's not like, um, hmm. it's not like, not Markovian. I don't know. It's, it's really, it opens up a lot of possibilities and changes the way you have to think about how to make music with them, or like what you can do with them. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But at the same time, it's just like um, a minor uh, version change because nothing else has changed. Um, unless you uh, use a state variable, it'll just be a normal one and it, um, it'll just work as before, um, which is quite nice. Um, so it's like an additional thing. But yeah, there's a whole new realm of possibilities, which um, I've only just started to explore. Um, so I invite you to join in. <laughs> How could you use state to walk through a long list? Um, 
Well, it could. Um, uh, it because it is a list in Haskell. It can be any length. It could be infinite. Um, and you're just um, taking with this take function. Like if I change this squiz to squiz take. Um, uh, um, it, it it can be any size, and it will just always just take one from the start. Um, it'd be nice to have ways of jumping through lists in in different ways, but that at the moment with the two functions, I've made counting and taking. Um, all it can do is take the what's called the head headed list. Um, how could you take the next? It's always kind of taking the next, but if you wanted to take more than one, then there's currently no interface for doing that. Um, but under the hood, it's just really simple arithmetic. So just be a case of um, taking more. Um, do you have a particular um, use case in mind there, Jeff? Um, So something in particular you want to do musically, or you're just thinking about lists in the abstract. Um, I think just having a think about that. Um, Any more questions? Or... Okay, uh, just we're gonna bring uh, something uh, like from the side way. So, um, so things like uh, syncing multiple machines, uh, mm -hmm. we've been trying uh, Link and we've been trying MIDI and whatnot, but there's always um, the, you kind of have to uh, nudge them together. Mm. Is there a better way to go about doing this, or is that the only way? How many people have you got? Um, how many? Uh, it's like five people. Oh, okay. That. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, even the same place. Uh yeah, like that's what I'm thinking also because for yeah remote jams we're doing uh, S3 or something like that anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um. It's it's tricky, isn't it? Getting them all. Um, getting them in phase is uh, in um, sync is one thing, but getting them in phase is another. Um, so how how are you nudging? Uh, just do nudge all. Uh, yeah, and then just try <laughs> to keep using these point values and maybe yeah, trying to uh, uh, um, But e because this is even the problem with like using link. So when um, uh, Will was talking about uh, Bitwig yesterday. Uh, I've tried like doing the same thing with Ableton and trying to see if I can keep the clocks somewhat the same, and maybe I like have a, a jam with other hardware and bringing it in. Mm. Uh, but it's always a bit of a sit there for like ten minutes trying to figure out if the phase and yeah. like the micro timing is proper. <laughs> yeah, it takes takes a while, doesn't it? Um, I, I I've done it, but only with like one other person maybe, and it's a bit easy there. Maybe two. Um, I think I'm done, done with five, and it worked great. It worked yeah. freaking, it works perfectly with the uh, carabiner. Okay. Nice. I think one thing to do is turn off network clock sync because if you're each syncing to a different version of network time, or if the Wi Fi is a bit dodgy, then I find because um, the way that Tidal works with Link, it's referring to the local clock and if that's changing then that might be adjusting things and that's a good thing to do anyway when you're performing actually is just turn off network sync um for the operating system um because otherwise you might get small glitches as it's adjusting to the network time hi Ranga. um i think um yeah i think nudge all is a good way of doing it and uh, you can adjust that latency in your boot title once you know what the number is um because you might just be adjusting it for the latency between super collider and your hardware and that might be what the magic number you need to find which i think even link can't work out um 
yeah i think there's no easy way of doing it but hopefully once you find that number it'll stay in the only problem is is if you're out by like a cycle um it can seem like it's in and then you change the <laughs> cps and everything goes wrong and then that really messes with your head um so yeah it, it could be tough but you have to yeah like i've had th things like i've um like not talking about link like talking about midi i've yeah. increased the nuts so much and then you realize by this time everything yeah. is <laughs> kind of yeah way apart you get and then you start getting into the kind of concepts of relativity it's this hard problem isn't it <laughs> yep totally um I think the two people who use MIDI the most it, uh, would be Mike probably and uh, Ben from Deru. I, I think these are the two people who I've seen most consistently okay. using MIDI. Uh, yeah. And I'm always in awe like how, how they <laughs> able to make 15 machines work together. Um, yeah, Shippin brings up super clean. So this is actually a fork of super dirt um which uh i think daniel m K carlson has done um but he's done this without actually talking to me or julian at all so it's not something i know about um and it is based on an old version of super dirt so it'll have bugs and things um and it doesn't do anything which super dirt can't do i think he's just renamed some parameters and things so you can um it so it's basically a version of super dirt um with some changes um i think the idea is that you can use it directly from super collider um so you can't actually use super clean with tidal i don't think um but actually you can use super dirt from super collider so i'm not really sure what the point of it is um and he hasn't talked to us at all so <laughs> I can't help you with that. Um, okay, I think uh, we've passed the presentation time now. Should we go to the... Yeah, let's, uh, let's try to do our show and tell session. Yeah, that'd be nice.